Good morning, everyone. Good morning, family of the living and true God. I hear some echo. It always is a pleasure for me to be giving a, a teaching of the Bible. And I always be grateful with this local congregation for this opportunity. The title of the lesson for this morning is, we find it in Genesis chapter 6, verse 5. Thanks, Brother Alex, for the scripture reading. And the title is, Great Weakness in Noah's Days. Genesis chapter 6, verse 5. This is a heartbreaking verse. And this heartbreaking verse echoes Genesis chapter 1, verse 31. In that verse describes God's sin, all that he had made after the sixth and final day of creation and observing, God was observing that the whole was very good. Everything that the Lord created in Genesis chapter one, it was very good. Now, hundreds of years after human sin had entered the world, God sees that man's weakness in, is the thing that is gray in the earth. It's the opposite now. In addition, God sees that every of the thoughts of the human heart is only evil continually. That is so sad. The book of Genesis is the Hebrew word that means beginnings. Uh, creations, and we believe and we understand that the Lord God creates everything that we see in this universe. But the mankind has been transforming all the creation of the Lord God in evils, in an evil way. And we're going to the first question to continue with this lesson. Why? Why was a great weakness in Noah's days? Genesis chapter 6, verse 2, is a controversial verse. Some people believe different stories about this verse. And we are going to be learning this morning in this lesson what about what the Bible said about this? Every time that I'm studying the Bible, I get information about what people think, but the most important information for me all the time is the Bible. What the Bible is saying about this topic. And the Bible, we find the context in the Bible. We got the answer in the Bible. We don't have to be inventing or, or thinking in a different stories. We only need to go to the Bible. In the Bible, we are going to find the answer of all the questions about God, about creation, about sin, about Jesus, and about every spiritual thing or any question that we have about salvation, for example, about eternity. In Genesis chapter 6, verse 2 says, here is where the problems begin. Why was a great weakness in Noah's day? Right here in this verse is the beginning of the great weakness or the great problem of the mankind in Noah's days. What the verse 2 says? Let's read it. Genesis chapter 6, verse 2. That the sons of God, let's pay attention to this. That the sons of God saw the daughters of men were beautiful. And they took wives for themselves, whomever they choose. The sons of God, they saw that the daughters of men were beautiful and they decide to take wives. The son of God were choosing wives for the wrong reason. In Genesis chapter 
Uh, two, we read that God created everything and he also created man. And he said, it's not good for man to be alone. I'm going to create for him a help. And he created a woman. So it's good. Before the eyes of the Lord, the marriage is good. It's something that is good. The marriage begins or is coming from above, from God. The first marriage that we see, it, it, we find it in the Bible right here in Genesis. Adam and Eve. That's the first marriage. And so it's good. But what is the problem now? That right here we see a problem. We see a problem like to get married is a problem right here. Okay, we write right here that the song of God were choosing wife for the wrong reason. It's not only to try to get married. We have to get, get married for the right reason. We see in the world people that is getting married every, every moment. A couple hours later or days or months or years later, they divorce. And people are getting married for money, for legal situation, for different reasons but are not really marriage before God. That's the problem. It could be a marriage before the war or before the society or before the country or before the authorities. We see different approbation of marriage in San Francisco, in California, man with man, woman with woman. And they call it marriage, but that's not a marriage before God. So. Why? Why right here we see that was a problem right here. And we are saying right now in this lesson that this is the beginning of the great weakness in Noah's days. Because they took why for the wrong reason. What was the reason that they decided, the son of God decided to take wife or the, or the daughters of the man? Why? They choose women that were pretty. Is something wrong? If, I, if we decide to get married and to choose and to pay and to decide to, to, to take a wife uh, or a woman that is beautiful, spirit, that's not a problem. That's not really a problem. But the second point that we have right here, they need to choose women that were good. When we are for the singles, when you are a single person, you are a single brother or a single sister, before to get married, don't only see the physical appearances. Not only that. If you find that, that's, that's good. I'm not saying that it's something wrong. But if you only are choosing a wife or a husband only because he's handsome, or because she's pretty or beautiful, that's the only reason that you are trying to get a husband or a wife. That's the wrong reason. That was the problem right here in Genesis chapter 6, verse 2. They need to choose women that were good, beautiful, and good. Two things. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ that gave to us wisdom and knowledge to choose a beautiful and good wife. A handsome and good husband. Let's give thanks to the Lord every day for that. That's a blessing. That's a blessing and that blessing is coming from above. If we are following the, the principles of the Lord, we are following his commands. If we are obedient, he's going to be giving to us knowledge and wisdom to be doing good things every day. So that was the problem right here in this chapter 6, verse 2. Then we are going to be following to get to the verse 5, and we see that now the problem grow up completely. But not before. It was the sin have entered to the world. 
But no, it wasn't a great weakness like this that we're going to see in the verse 5. And we continue seeing until the flood came to the earth. We read in, in, in verse in, in verse 2, the sons of God, the sons of God saw the daughters of men were beautiful. Who were the sons of God? We said that verse 2 is the controversial verse. People is saying, some religious people is saying, fallen angels. Son of God means fallen angels. There it was coming before to partake the Lord's Supper. That Jesus got the opportunity to call 10,000 angels to destroy the war, to save himself. But he didn't do it. The angels are called in the Bible, of course, sons of God. But not the fallen angels. The fallen angels we never find in the Bible that are called sons of God. We read in the Bible that the fallen angels are called in the Bible demons. No sons of God anymore. They were sons of God. The same thing with us. We are Christians. We are children of God. If we abide in Jesus Christ, it's conditional. If we turn back to the world, we are no more children of God. We need to come back to return to God. It's conditional. So people said, Son of God means falling angels that came down to the earth and they get married with the daughters of men. I say men means, in other words, men to me, the human beings. And the daughters of the human beings or the men get married with the fallen angels. They, these women got pregnant and they bear giants. And the disorder in the earth begin for this reason. That's the, the story that, that, that we hear about many people saying about this verse number two, Genesis chapter six, verse two. And also they are and became corrupt in all their ways. All human beings become corrupt in all their ways because these foreign angels came down and took wives. And then the whole earth was corrupt. It was a great weakness in the world. That's what, that's what no, I believe. I don't believe those things. I'm just, just saying what some people believe about that. Let's start reading. Job chapter 1, verse 6. Who were the son of God? That's the, 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 the second question that we have in the lesson this morning. Job chapter 1, verse 6. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them, according to Job chapter 1, verse 6, and many other verses in the Bible, in the Old Testament. We don't have enough time right now to be making reference to all of them, but this is enough. According to Job 1, 6, some of God's mean angels. He's talking about the angels. The angels, the word angel is a Greek word that simply means messenger. The angels are son of God, but are also messengers of God. They came back to the presence of the Lord. And Job 1.6 says, also, Satan came among them. But let's see this one. Satan is no core son of God. Just Satan. 
and this son of God came to the present self before the Lord, are coming back from a mission. We don't know. God is sending angels to do different things. They are coming back to the presence of God. So according to Job 1.6, sons of God means angels. They are making reference to angels. But Genesis chapter 6, verse 2, son of God means also angels over there? All right, we, we will see it. We will see it very soon. What about John chapter 1, verse 12 in the New Testament? Jesus talking about the huge people. Jesus is saying, but as many as receive him. Oh, I mean, the Apostle John talking about the Lord Jesus. The Apostle John is saying, but as many as receive him. King is Jesus Christ. The Apostle John is saying, as many as receive Jesus Christ to them, he gave, Jesus gave the right to become children of God or sons of God. Even, the Apostle John adds something, even those who believe in his name. According to John chapter 1, verse 12, Son of God are the believers. The one who believe and receive Jesus Christ as the Son of God. John is saying that is called Son of God. So, according to the Old Testament, Son of God are the angels. According to the New Testament, Son of God or children of God are the believers. But remember this one. Never the Bible says that fallen angels are sons of God. Where? Son of God. But no are sons of God. And Peter said, and you said, they are in prisons of darkness, waiting until the day of the judgment. In the New Testament, we see that they were asking permission to Jesus. And they possess, of course, human beings. But the rest of the people could see that that person was possessed, was transformed, acting in a different way. It was something obvious. But believe that story that it came down and two wives and these women get pregnant. That's a story that doesn't have sense. God, God responds to this great weakness of the verse 5. God is, God is going to respond. God did not allow the human race to stay in this rebellious place forever. God is not allowed that. Right, right now we see weakness in the world, but not a great weakness by this time. But Brothers and sisters, this means there is a point of no return in our rejection of God. And there is a point where God, the Lord, says no more. Enough is enough. I'm going to stop this. If we understand this, all the more reason for us brothers and sisters, all the more reason for us to say today is the day we will respond to Jesus. If we are living a life that is not according to the will of Jesus Christ, this is the day to respond. It's not good to wait for another day. We don't know if we're going to have another day. He's a merciful Lord. He's a loving Father. But there is a time when he said, this is enough. No more. 
No more, that's it. And he said in Genesis chapter 6, verse 3, Then the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever. I'm not going to continue allowing this situation. That's it. That's enough. And the verse adds, Because he also is flesh. Again, let's pay attention to this. The Lord is not saying, because he is also possessed for falling angels. No, he doesn't say that. He said, because he also is flesh, his spirit, like me. When he created man, the man he created from the dust, that is the flesh. But he gave one spirit. And that internal part is similar to God. That's the way that we are created at the image and likeness of God. Not in the physical. God is no flesh. God's spirit. John chapter 4, verse 24. That's what he's saying right here in the verse 3. Then the Lord said, the Lord God said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever because he also is flesh. His spirit like me, but he also is flesh. We are not equal. Nevertheless, his days shall be 120 years. That's it. I'm not going to continue allowing this great weakness on the earth. 120 years. This is not the outside lifespan of man. But the time left until the judgment of the flood. 120 years is going to pass before the flood. In other words, this is one announcement. God was announcing to the mankind 120 years of time in order to repent of your great weakness. If you don't repent, you're going to perish. 120 years. And that's it. No more time than that. 120 years for Noah to be teaching, persuading people. Preaching. Return to God. He was preaching to everybody, to the Son of God that took wife of the daughters of men. He also were over there in that number, and he was teaching today. Return to God. But remember this Noah was part of the Son of God too. But he was the only family that kept the faith in God. He keep faithful. What happened with the fallen angel? Why did they possess Noah and his family too? Have you wondered that? Why not then? Why the rest of the humanity except Noah? It's because they were fallen angels. The Bible is not talking about that. In the following paragraph, we're going to be explaining more about that. 120 years to repent and come back to God. Every day that the Lord is giving to us, every day of life is an opportunity to repent of our sins and come back to the Lord. It's one opportunity. Verse number four, Genesis chapter six, verse number four. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days, in the days of Noah. And also afterward, I'm going to stop right here before to continue reading, because I want to explain this, this, this word. This word, Nephilim, is a Hebrew word that that's, is the English word for giant. Nephilim. Hebrew war, English war, giant. I'm going to read again. The Nephilim or the giant were on the earth in those days. 
Which days? Noah's days. And also afterward. Let's continue reading now. When the Son of God came into the daughters of men. I was saying that some religious people said fallen angels came down to wives. This wife get pregnant and they bore children and they were born giants. But the Bible said in the verse 4 that the giants were before to get to the verse 5. In the verse 4, Nephilim or the giant were on the earth on those days. And also afterward, when the sons of God came, after that the son of God to what continue the woman giving birth giants, but they were before. So how to explain? No sense. For me, it doesn't have sense to believe that fallen angels came down, and that's the reason that the, the women uh, were uh, or get pregnant and birth giants. And then the, the earth begins to corrupt in a great way. No sense. According to the verse 4. And when the sons of God came to the daughters of men and they bore children to them. Then the verse 4 asks, those were the mighty men who were of all men or renowned. Yes, were mighty, a giant, probably a, a foot or nine foot of tall, very strong physically, mighty men, but they were before that the son of man, they wife or the daughters of man. They were, they already were over there. But people believe, God sends, some people believe. The flood to destroy this. In Numbers chapter 13, we continue reading that there were giants on the earth. What about David with Goliath? Was also a giant. So that's not the reason. That's a wrong reason to think in that way. That's not what the Bible said about that. And we got another question right here. Is it possible for an angel or a spirit to get married? If we are going to accept that Genesis chapter 6, verse 2, son of God means fallen angels. So we got the following question. We have the following question right here. Is it possible for an angel or a spirit to get married? What's the Bible said about that? Matthew chapter 22, verse 30. Jesus talking with the Sadducees. The Sadducees asked to Jesus. They want to trap Jesus in his speech. They didn't believe in the resurrection of death, but they are pretending that they believe in the resurrection of death to trap Jesus. And they asked a Jesus a question. They asked to Jesus in the context. They said uh, there was a, a family right here in Israel. Seven brothers get married with the same woman. But all of them pass away, pass away until at the end, also the woman, she died. Lord Jesus, you said you are teaching that there is resurrection of death. In the resurrection of death, whose wife of the seven will she be? A difficult question to try to trap him. And it's, now it's when we read in Matthew chapter 22, verse 30, that Jesus is responding today. For in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are giving in marriage, but are like angels in heaven. Do you understand Jesus' point? Angels don't get married. Spirit, you got the question again. 
Is it possible for an angel or a spirit to get married? Jesus said, no. In Genesis chapter 6, verse 2, it doesn't say that they intimate or they fornicate with human beings, these fallen angels that people believe. They, Genesis 6, 2 says, they took wives wives they get married and Jesus is saying right here angels that doesn't get married spirit doesn't get married what about Luke chapter 24 verse 39 after his resurrection the Lord Jesus appeared to his apostles and he, he they didn't believe that was Jesus they thought that he was a ghost or a spirit. And he said to them, See my hands. I am the crucified one. See my hand, the horse, the horse in my hands. See my hands and my feet. See the horse on my feet. That is I myself. Touch me and see. For a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. A spirit doesn't have bone, doesn't have flesh. A angel, it doesn't have flesh, it doesn't have bone. When we read in the Bible that angels appear to human beings it's because they took the form of a human beings. They are a spirit, invisible spirit. They don't, they don't have flesh. They don't have bones. So again, the question, it is that possible? According to the Bible, we see that it's not possible. In John chapter 3, verse 6, Jesus talking with Nicodemus. Jesus said to Nicodemus, that which is born of the flesh, is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. In other words, flesh gives birth flesh. Spirit gives birth spirit. It's something impossible. It's impossible one spirit or one angel can intimate or get married with a human being. That's not possible according to the Bible. The context of Genesis chapter 6, verse 2, we find it in the same Bible. We don't have to be inventing or thinking uh, different stories. In the same Bible, we got the answers. If you read in your Bible, Genesis chapter 6, verse 1, verse 3, and verse 5, the context is talking about man, man, weakness of man, human beings. And Genesis chapter 4 is the context of Genesis chapter 2 to verse 5. That's the context. Two lines. Genesis chapter 4 is talking about the unsaved line, the descendants of Cain. Genesis chapter 5 is talking about the descendants of Seth. Until we get to Noah. And we got right here. Who are the sons of God? according to the same Bible, are the descendants of Seth. The same line. The same line. The believers of Jehovah God decide to take wife to this side. There's no, where, no, no more women in this side? Yes. There were women right here too. But the women decide to take men from this Size two. And then the corruption of the wars begins. That's when we read in Genesis chapter 6, verse 5, was a great weakness. Not before that, because this line 
keep faithful to God. But now, the whole my kind is practicing sins no once in a while. Continually, that was the verse says, their thoughts or their mind or their heart were evil continually. We don't see this kind of recognition yet. We don't see it. Not yet. Sometimes, even to us, that we are people of God, came to our mind evil thoughts. But we rebuke those evil thoughts in the name of Jesus Christ. But that's not continually. But this, in this time, was continually. Every moment, every second, only practicing and doing the evil things. That's the context. Genesis chapter 4 and Genesis chapter 5. Brothers and sisters, the Lord Jesus Christ, he made reference to Noah's days. He said, the second come, or the second coming, or the Son of Man will be as was just like, like was in the days of Noah. People, uh, Jesus did, <laughs> didn't say, people was possessed or fallen angels came down. Jesus didn't say that. Jesus said, but said something. They were marrying and giving in marriage. Eating and drinking. Is that a problem to be eating and drinking? No, that's not a problem. But this was more than that. Eating right here means gluttony. Drinking, drunkenness, perversions. It's a problem to get married? Again, it's not a problem to get married. Why Jesus is saying marry and keeping in marriage? The wrong reason is a problem. It's not a biblical reason. It's not according to God, who is the creator of marriage. It's a problem. There is a problem. So, are we ready? Are we re ready to wait for Jesus Christ? It's coming again. And in his second coming, is going to be great weakness again. I was in the Noah's days. Let's be prepared. We are in time right now. Let's repent. Let's confess our sins. Let's come to Jesus Christ. Let's be baptized for the forgiveness of our sins. And let's begin a new life according to the will of Jesus Christ. This is the invitation in this morning for all of us. Thank you so much. Thanks for the, uh, uh, paying attention, attention to this lesson. God bless.